Do you enjoy drinking Cooper's Australian Pale Ale and you thought you'd like to make it yourself using their homebrew kit? Come along with me and I'll show you how to make it quick and easy. Let's go. Hey guys, Musa here from Quantum Home Improvements and Solutions. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be making Cooper's Australian Pale Ale. So Raj reached out to me a while ago and asked me if I can make a different type of Cooper's beer. But the only problem is that he lives in a climate where it's 35 degrees Celsius eight months of the year. But he also asked if he can make a brew at between eight to 10% alcohol level. So I reached out to Frank from Cooper's, who was very helpful, and he suggested that I make the Australian Pale Ale, which is actually my most favorite beer, and I make it all the time. But I'm gonna have to make three changes. First of all, I'm gonna have to drop the level down from 23 down to 20 liters and add dextrose sugar. Now, this is a pure sugar, contaminant free of any chemicals, and I'm gonna put half a kilo into the mix. Plus, I'm gonna have to add some dry enzyme. So dry enzyme does two things. Um, first of all, it helps the yeast consume more sugar in the brew. Uh, and what that does then, it drops down the carb level, which is really good. Um, and so without that, you won't get it to the percentage alcohol level that you want. And so the third thing I need to do is change the yeast. So when you buy the Australian Pale Ale, it'll come with its own yeast, which can be brewed up to 27, 28 degree, but that's not gonna work in this case. So we're gonna change the yeast. Uh, Frank suggested to use Kivek, which is an ale yeast. And this particular yeast comes from Norway. It's very traditional in that area, uh, which is a bit confusing for me because it's a very cold climate, but it can get up to 35 degree in temperature when you're brewing. First of all, I have to put the syrup into boiling water and let it sit for a while. So I'm gonna do that first and get that out of the way so that can soften while I'm doing the cleaning. So just rip the lid off and you'll find the yeast sitting on top. Now we're not gonna use that yeast, I'll put it aside and I'll use it for another brew. And so there's also a label on here, the instructions. All you've gotta do is carefully, I mean real carefully, take this off. So it is stuck a little bit. Okay, there we go. So you'll find these instructions here on how to make the brew. Um, and that's just a guide. I will walk you through it step by step regardless. So you put that on the side. And so we just put this in boiling water. So I do have the urn full of water and it's boiled. And I'll now transfer that over to the sink and get this to soften. Okay, so while the water is steaming away, softening the syrup, uh, I'm gonna wash out the fermenter. And so uh, it does have sanitized water in there. So you do have to sanitize this well before time. And the sanitizer I use is Brigolo's 100% sodium metabisulfate. And so everything has to be washed out now in hot water, but you do not put soap to it. Okay, so the fermenter now is washed. This two part tap, now I'll just put back together. Just turn that off. And then I'll just push it back into its place. And it clicks in, so you know it's in. Basically, you can see the window here. And in the window, you can see a whole section of the rubber. And that means uh, that it's on the opposite end of where it actually is gonna come through. So when you turn it this way, the hole now will allow the brew to come out. So you close it off to your left when you're looking at it. So this is Cooper's newer version fermenter. So first we'll put the sleeve in. So I carry this with a tea towel because uh, this is now very, very hot. I'll just open it up. So I'll just place about 1.5 litres in. Drop the syrup in. Now you'll have a lot of thick syrup in there and you need to really get that out because it's a wasted syrup if you don't use it. So I'll just slowly run the hot water on top of that and wash down the walls. So I'll just put the remainder in. It's about 500 mil in there. Just give it a bit of a swirl and allow 
all the syrup to take up. And that's all gone now. Okay, so I'll just pour it in. Beautiful. Done. I'll just close that lid down. Okay, so while the water is still very warm, I'll put in the sugar. Now, I tend to do it very slowly so it doesn't clog up. Now, you won't need to stir this in too much. And it doesn't matter if it um, clogs together a little bit. You just don't want big chunks in here. That's what we're trying to avoid. So just keep moving that around and let it just dissolve in different areas and so you won't have too many chunky bits. But the yeast will consume that. Okay, so now I'm gonna put in half a kilo of dextrose. And that's 500 grams. Okay, so just a little bit of a stir. You don't need to over stir it. So usually when you put your water in, you try to get that temperature down to around between 21 to 27 degree, 28 degree. In this case here, we wanna put some warm water in there. So I'm boiling some more water now to keep that temperature up high to get it to 35 degree. So I've just realized that because it's a two part system, I've got to get the water past the sleeve section or it won't seal. So I have no choice. I've got to go a little bit above 20 liters. So it depends on your fermenter how low you can actually take your fluid level. I'll just check the temperature to make sure that it is sitting around 35 degree. Would you believe that it's actually sitting right on 35 degrees? So, uh, I'll put a bit more water in, but I don't think I'm gonna need much hot water to bring it up. I've gone around about a centimeter above the actual, probably just under a centimeter, above the lip of the two sleeve and the uh, fermenter. So it's actually sitting right on 21 liters, um, which is not what I was aiming for, but still I've got no choice because I've got to seal the sleeve in the fermenter so I don't let the oxygen uh, enter into the, uh, into the brew. So the next thing I'm gonna do is put the dry enzyme. So it's recommended that you check your hydrometer reading for two days and to see if it's flattened out um, because it can take longer to ferment when you're using a dry enzyme. So I generally let my brew go to eight days regardless. Uh, Coopers uh, generally say six days. Okay, so I'll put the whole packet. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the Kivek yeast. So just put the yeast on top, but don't stir it, just let it settle on its own. Okay, so now I'm just gonna get a hydrometer reading. Probably should have done it before I put the yeast in, but it's still not too late. Uh, it's coming out at 1.050, and the potential alcohol level shows at 6.4% alcohol. Now I'm aiming for eight, but I did have to put an extra liter in to uh, cover that lip but the dry enzyme is actually gonna consume more sugar than normal. So this is not an accurate reading. Um, I would say it's gonna go well over 7% or thereabouts. So whatever you do, do not place this beer back into the fermenter. Okay, so as I said before, this is a different system to my other fermenter. So you use a little clip to lock off the sides. I have lost my other clip. And so what I use now is paper clips. So I forgot to mention before, whenever putting an external thermometer into the uh, brew, to make sure that it is sanitized and cleaned well. So I am expecting the temperature to drop during the night and possibly over the next few days. So I will use Morgan's heat pad to keep that warm. I'll plug it in um, and I might even put a blanket around it just to keep that uh, temperature consistent. It's now just over eight days and the brew is complete and ready for bottling. So remember, when you're using an enzyme, a dry enzyme, uh, it will take one or two days longer than normal fermenting. Um, so I have done uh, two readings and it's now stabilized, but I will check one more time. Uh, also, uh, I was a little concerned because the temperature was sitting at around about 29 to 30 degree while I was fermenting. Um, so I put a blanket around it. Uh, but I've since discovered that uh, the Quebec yeast can brew anywhere from 29 
to 38 degree. So it's in that realm. But because I've put a blanket on it, it is sitting around about 33 degree and it was around 34. So it's actually fermenting at a really good temperature. So I'll just take the blanket off and then get another hydrometer reading. So the original gravity was at 1.050 which makes it 6.4 potential alcohol. But the reading now after using the enzyme uh, is actually 0.995, which is a minus 0.7. So to calculate that, uh, usually you would minus the figure, uh, the, the final figure off the original figure. But here, because it's a minus figure of 0.7, you actually add that to the 6.4. 6 so that makes it just over uh, seven percent alcohol level so now that I know the fermenting has stabilized uh, I can now bottle it and uh, put in the carbonated drops all right I'll put on the little bottler so I do suggest you put a towel on the ground because you will get some beer dripping on the floor I'm just going to release the pressure off this just turn the tap on and so when you're using the little bottler uh, it's got a little valve on the bottom. It's just mechanical, it's not uh, anything fancy, but it works very effectively. And you just push that little valve against the base of the bottle and the beer will start to come out. So I always have another bottle in my hand ready to uh, take over the last bottle because you'll find you need to be fairly efficient because you will lose a lot of beer on the ground if you're not. The little bottler will leak a little bit. This brew smells really nice. So the brew doesn't look too dissimilar to the standard pale ale using the Cooper's recommended yeast um, and uh, not using the dry enzyme. Um, and I'm, I kind of think that it's probably not gonna taste too uh, dissimilar as well. But it will taste slightly different because it is a low carb beer and it's a higher alcohol content. So it won't taste as sweet. So this brew should be ready just in time for the first state of origin game. Okay, so I'm running out of room on the bench, so I might just turn that tap off and put the carbonated drops in and just get these bottles off the bench. So remember you put two carbonated drops in per bottle and close that bottle really tight. I'll just give it a bit of a shake up. So the reason you close them really, really tight is because from experience, I found that if you don't put them tight enough, the gases which are still going to be uh, developing in these bottles uh, will start to leak out and if they do leak out they become flat and the beer would be useless. So I'll now bottle the remainder. Okay so it's coming close to the end um, and you notice that the tap is quite high compared to the base uh, which is different to the original fermenter that uh, Cooper's had. Um, so what I do with that I do still uh, drain that um, brew out but I'll use them as my uh, tester brews. So as the uh, time passes, I'll use, drink those first to see how the beer tastes like. So they're not, they don't go to waste. Um, but the reason Coopers do that because um, it allows the sediment to drop to the bottom and you don't get sediment in your bottles. So it's really crucial that you don't uh, allow too much sediment back into your bottle. So I'll close the tap once more and I will use that remainder in a minute. The batch is now complete and ready for storage. But don't forget to write down on the box the type of beer and the date you brewed just to keep a record of how old the beer is. Now, Coopers uh, make their beer GMO free, so genetically modified organism free, and they have a best after date. So you can drink this around three weeks, but my experience tells me it tastes better after two and a half months or more. It just gets better in taste. So I'd like to thank Raj for his request for a beer to be brewed at 35 degree. It's given me an opportunity to make something I would not normally have made. So this is the first time I made a beer at seven or just over 7% alcohol level. And it's gonna be very interesting uh, how that tastes and also what effect it has. Um, and I will take the opportunity to say, please drink responsibly. I'd also like to thank Frank from Coopers uh, for giving me a bit of time on the phone and just giving me a lot of information to help me make this brew successful. And uh, once again, Pale Ale is my most favorite beer and I'm looking forward to tasting this. So that's the end of this video. 
I hope you liked it. I hope you got something out of it. And I'd ask if you please leave a comment below and I will get back to you. And I'll also put a link below if you're looking to buy one of these Cooper's brewery kits. And finally, I'd ask if you please consider to subscribe, hit the like button and share this video. And there's many more videos to come and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks guys.